Tonight, the DuPont Company brings you The Forge, starring Ronald Reagan on The Cavalcade of America. Now, first, here is Gain Whitman. Good evening. Bring new beauty to your home with Speed Easy, the easy-to-use resin oil emulsion paint. You can choose from 11 fresh, lovely colors. There's a true white for ceilings, too. The cost? Only $3.49 a gallon. And a gallon will paint the walls and ceilings of the average size room. One coat usually covers, and it dries in an hour. Remember, it's speedy, it's easy. It's Speed Easy, made by DuPont. Maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Now, The Forge, starring Ronald Reagan as Elizabeth Remington on the Cavalcade of America. The year, about 1815. The place, a little silversmith shop in Herkimer, New York. A young man stands by, watching the deft hands and smooth skill of the smith as he works. Ah, ah, there. That set of spoons is finished. Uh, now, my boy, what did you say your name was? Uh, Remington. Elifalit Remington. Yeah? Uh, well, what can I do for you? Well, nothing now, I guess. Nothing? Oh, what were you doing here all morning? Watching you work. I know that, but <laughs> young man, you didn't walk all the way to Herkimer just to watch me work, did you? Well, no, sir. My father sent me to have these silver coins made into spoons for my sister's wedding present. Oh, good. Uh, let me see the coins. Uh, no, I've changed my mind. You, you've changed your mind? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you for letting me watch your work, sir. You've given me an idea. <laughs> Of all the foolish things, you went all the way to Herkimer and you've come back with the coin. But I've got an idea, Father. So have I, Eliphalet, and you're not too big yet for me to carry it out. Here, 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 you two. What's the matter? Mother, if he went all the way to Herkimer and came back with the coins, they would have been made into silver spoons for Elizabeth's wedding present. Shh, not so loud. Elizabeth will hear you. Eliphalet, I told you to have those coins made into spoons. Why didn't you? If I could have a chance to explain. Explain? Explain what? Father, I watched the silversmith make a few spoons. It's easy. I could make them myself. What in time nation are you talking about, son? You're not a silversmith. Oh, we better get those coins back there right away. Please, wait a minute. Father, you taught me how to use the forge and the tools. Well, what's that got to do with the spoons? I'll make them. <laughs> Overnight, he's an expert silversmith. Now, if it, I could... Father, careful. Son, I could... Come in? Why, Abigail Paddock, come right in. How are you, dear? Very well, thank you. Good evening, Mr. Remington. Elizabeth? Good evening, Abigail. Hello, Abigail. I... I hope I'm not... Oh, no, dear. How's your mother? Oh, she's fine, thank you. Did you order the spoons for the wedding present, Elizabeth? Ah, spoons. I sent him... To... I sent him to Herkimer with this money to be made into spoons. He watches the silversmith for a few minutes and then brings the coins back. He tells me there's nothing to making spoons. Anybody can do it. I want to make them myself, Abigail. And I can do it, Father. I know I can. Why don't you let me try? It's a question of time, Eliphalet. There's only three weeks. I think I can do it. In three weeks? I think so, Father. I'll help. I'd love to come over and help, Eliphalet. Oh, you wouldn't have any fun watching me out in that old forge. It's dusty and full of spiders. My sisters won't go near the place. You mean you'd rather I wouldn't come over? Oh, no. I want you to come, if you want to. All right. Gee, Mr. Remington, that'll be wonderful. <laughs> You know, son, I've got half a mind to let you try, just to teach you a lesson. I'll start tomorrow morning. And if I don't finish those spoons... I'll then... finish you. <laughs> there, all finished, Abigail. The last one. As soon as it's cooled, you can polish it. It's the most beautiful set of spoons I've ever seen. And finished ahead of time, too. That's because you helped me. I'm glad you said that. Well, it's true. I worked faster because you were here. But I wasn't much help. And just you being here helped a lot. Elizabeth? Huh? I'm sorry the spoons are finished. I'm not. <laughs> they had to be. I won't have an excuse to come over every day. Oh. I never thought about that. Anyway, I loved watching you. I liked the way the silver took shape when you worked it. 
You're an artist, Elizabeth. Hmm. It's funny. What's funny? Abby, I got so used to your being here every day, I, I sort of took it for granted. Never thought that well, when I finished the spoons, maybe... You never thought what? I... Look, Abby, I guess we could see each other pretty often, huh? Do you want to? Well, I was going to say something the other day. About what? Well, you're pretty, Abby. What were you going to say? Well, just because the spoons are finished, that's no reason for us not to see each other, is it? No. I guess I love you, Abby. Will you say that again? I love you, Abby. Little at Remington, it took you long enough. Long enough? But I've been thinking about it for weeks. Then why didn't you say it? Well, look, I haven't got much. But someday I'll have a farm and a forge of my own. And then you and I... I don't want to wait for a farm or a forge. Why don't you ask me now? All right. Abby, will you marry me? I've been thinking about it for weeks. What's the matter? My rifle, help me load it quick. What is it? Bear, he's after the lamb. Oh, no, we've lost three already. Oh, uh, this time I'll get him. Here's the powder horn. Hurry, Abby. Here's the patch. Oh, hurry, a little and hurry. I am, I am. Someday someone will make a gun that won't take all day to load. There he is, a little. Look. Stay in here. Be careful. Stay here. Be careful, a little. And... Hold the door open for me, Abby. If I don't get in the first shot, I'll have to make a run for it. A little. A little, you're hurt. The door, Abby, the door. Close it. Alan, what happened? Oh, the barrel burst. You're hurt. Ah, not badly. That rifle wasn't worth a hoot. You might have been killed. Never mind, it's over. Oh, I know, but oh, you might Oh, calm have... down, Abby. Your hands, look at them. Oh, they look just look worse than they are. The important thing is we haven't got a rifle. And we need one, Abby. We need one. Oh, it's no use. Trying to repair this rifle would be harder than making a new one. What did you say, darling? Now, that rifle, look at it. Whoever made this ought to have to face that bear with it. Well, don't worry about it now. But we've got to worry, Abby. Three more lambs gone. We'll get a new rifle. With what? Can't afford it. Well, stop worrying now and eat. Look, Abby. The workmanship on that rifle was just plain bad. I could do better than that, and I'm no gunsmith. <laughs> you weren't a silversmith either, but you made those spoons. What did you say? I said you made the spoon. Now, come on, eat your supper. Why not? Why not make my own rifle? Now, a little at spoons were one thing, making a rifle. Wait a minute. I've got my hands, a forge, anvil, hammer. But, darling... Why not? Abby, will you help me? How can I help you make a rifle? Listen, honey, pick up every piece of scrap iron you see. What? Well, not if they're too heavy. But pick them up. I've got some good pieces that'll be fine for the barrel. That has to be best. And I can use small pieces for bands, trigger guard. I'm going to start now. A little it come back here and eat. Look for Iron Abby and bring the pieces to the forge. I want to get started while there's still some light. Good afternoon. Huh? I said good afternoon. Hold on a minute. Yeah. What'd you say? I said, good afternoon. Mm, that all? Uh, no, sir. I'd like to have this gun barrel rifled. Yeah, you can do that work here, can't you? Yeah, can we can, young fellow? Let me see. Here you are. Mm. Mm. Yeah. What's the matter? What are you looking at it like that? I don't see no gunsmith initials on it. Should be on it here. Oh, I guess I forgot that. Yeah? You forgot it? How do you mean? Well, I made that barrel. Huh? <laughs> what are you laughing at? Son, I've seen many a gun barrel in my day. Imported, domestic, bad, good, not so good, but i never seen a homemade one like this. Well, what's the matter with it? But not a thing. Not a thing. You sure you made this? Of course I did. Mm, it's a first-rate job. You made it yourself, huh? Well, don't you believe me? Well, I guess I got it. What's your name, son? Eliphalet Remington. Uh, what do you do for a living? I'm a farmer. A farmer? You can make a barrel like this and you're a farmer? Well, I'm not a gunsmith. I just needed a gun. Made that. But I didn't have the tools to rifle the barrel, so I brought it to you. Want a job? Job? Here? Yep. 
I can use that pair of hands. <laughs> oh, no. I'm a farmer, and that's that. Hmm. Uh, you'll be careful of that barrel, won't you, sir? It took me two weeks to make it. Son, don't you worry about me being careful. I'll just soon burn my shop down. <laughs> I know a good gun when I see it. But it's all right, Abigail. The gun's all right. How do you know? You never made one before. There, there might be something wrong. But I made every part myself. Now, Abby, I've got to fire it to test it. You don't have to put it to your shoulder. Abby, Abby, what are you worried about? The spoons were all right, weren't they? But they weren't a gun. What's the matter? Don't you have any confidence in me? A little at Remington. Of all the things to say. Well, then why make such a fuss about my firing the gun? Not now. A little at do it tomorrow. Why wait till tomorrow? If there's anything wrong with it, I want to find it out now. Give it to me. What for? Give it to me. Uh... Here. Confidence in you. I'll show you. Abby, what are you going to do? I'm going to fire it. No, put it down. Abigail, don't fire that gun. Haven't you any confidence in your gun, Elizabeth? Don't you think it'll be all right? Why can't I test it as well as you? All right, all right. You win. I won't fire it, but it's got to be tested. How can you do it? Well, look. Come over to the fence. What are you going to do? Fasten the rifle in an angle of the fence, like this. Mm, let's see. String. But how will you fire it? Wait. Why are you taking off your shoe? I want the lace. All right, now. Tie one end of the lace to the trigger. So. Now, Abby, see that knot on the elm over there just above the first limb? Uh-huh. Now, I'll line up the sights on that. That should be it. All right, Abby, get back. To the side, away from the gun. Elizabeth. What, dear? I... I want to pull the string. All right, honey. But stay away from him and back and keep down below the breech. Got it? I'm ready. Now, when I count three... Go... Go ahead. One, two, three. Oh! Abby. I'm, I'm all right. It just scared me. Look, Abigail. It, it's wonderful. Abby, I made a gun. And, and it didn't burst like the other one. What, did you expect it to? Well, no, I didn't. Abby, look, the knot on the elm. Blown to bits. The gun's true, Abby, it's true. All right, now let that bear come back. Turkey shoot. Hey, excuse me, mister. Well, hello there, fella. Do anything for you? Well, I'd like to enter the turkey shoot. Sure thing, laddie. No law against it. The three bullets closest to the center wins a 20-pound turkey. All right. My name's Remington. E. Remington. E. Remington. Hey, I'll turn you down. Now, what make a rifle you use? Mine. This one. Yeah, I can see it, son, but uh, who made it? Oh, I did. You what? I made it myself. <laughs> Wait a minute, young fella. Uh, maybe you better wait a couple of years. Well, I thought anyone could enter. Well, sure, sure. But I'm thinking about you. What do you mean? Well, just to show you what I mean, you, uh... You see that fellow standing over there talking to the big man in the buckskins? Yeah. That's Van Swipe. And, uh, right back of him's Deering. Well, I've heard of him. Yeah, so has anyone who ever packed a rifle to a takey shoot. And say, yeah, look, that's Jocelyn right over there. Won two years in a row. Best shot in the state. Oh. Hmm. Now you want to enter? I do. All right, but don't say I didn't warn you. All right, now, what do you call your rifle? What do I call it? Why, I don't know. Just mine. Yeah, I've got to have a name for the record. Suppose I just put you down as shooting your own rifle. That'll be all right with me. Thank you. Mm, don't mention it, young fella. Any more entries? Any more entries? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, closest of three bullets to the center wins the turkey and the shooting meat. Best entry, E. Remington, shooting with a Remington rifle. You are listening to The Forge, starring Ronald Reagan as Eliphalet Remington on The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. a turkey shoot with his homemade rifle, Eliphalet Remington finds himself pitted against the best shots in the state. As the contest goes on, Remington amazes the onlookers by his skill 
and by the performance of his rifle. As the second part of our story opens, there are two contestants left. Eliphalet and the winner of the past two years, Mr. Jocelyn. All right, folks, all right. Step back and give the contestants plenty of room. Finalists, Mr. Jocelyn and Mr. Remington. Best three shots determine the winner. Mr. Jocelyn, you shoot first. The caller at the target will announce the hits. Are you ready, Mr. Jocelyn? Ready. Fire when you will, sir. In the black. <laughs> Mr. Remington, you ready? I'm ready. Fire when you will. In the black. <laughs> Are you ready for the second round, Mr. Jocelyn? Ready. for you, Mr. Remington. I'm ready. Dead center in the black. Good work. <laughs> and the third and last round, unless one of the contestants is eliminated, another round will be fired. Mr. Jocelyn, you ready, sir? I'm ready. Remington, are you ready for your third round? I am, sir. One half inch for Mr. Jocelyn's shot, just outside the blind. Oh. Congratulations, sir. Well, oh, thanks. Thank you, gentlemen. Mighty close. Oh, uh, just a minute, Mr. Remington. Just a minute. Congratulations, Mr. Jocelyn. Thanks, Remington. I think I was lucky. You? Shooting like that isn't luck, Mr. Jocelyn. Maybe not, but I think differently. Mind if I take a look at that rifle? Of course not. Here you are. Say, wonderful balance. Lighter than mine. I tried to make it light. Threw barrel on it. Wonderful. I, uh, I didn't groove the barrel. I had to have that done in Herkimer. How long did it take you to make this? Two weeks. Um, think you could make another one just as good? Oh, I can make one that's better. Look, Mr. Johnson, I, I learned a lot while making it. I can reduce the trigger pull, get better iron, and make the whole gun lighter. And I'll make the sights better. The sights weren't quite true. That's what threw me off, and I... Oh, yes? <laughs> what else? I didn't mean it that way, Mr. Joslin. I just... Well, I think you'd have won anyway. <laughs> I don't know about that. Listen, uh, let me take this gun and try it out, all right? Why, sure. I'll uh, bring it back to you by tomorrow afternoon, and I'd like to say something to you then, um, something that might interest you. Mrs. Remington, I'd feel guilty eating this turkey. But it's yours, Mr. Jocelyn. Uh, I don't feel I really want it. The little it did. <laughs> I missed my last shot. You didn't. I still say I was lucky. I was shooting with an English rifle that cost me $225. A little it made his at the old forge. Now take the turkey, please. Well, all right. But only if you'll have Thanksgiving dinner with it. <laughs> Wonderful. And I've gained on the deal. Uh... Mr. Joslin, did you try the rifle? I did, and I want to talk to you about it. You liked it? I fired 20 rounds, and some of the men who were shooting against you yesterday were watching me. And? And I know guns. Those men know guns. Eliflin, that rifle you made is the best I've ever held in my hands. Well, that's very kind of you to say that, Mr. Joslin. No, no, not at all. Look, Eliflin, I want a rifle like this. Will you make me one? Set your own price on it. Oh, but I'm, I'm not a gunsmith. He made the rifle because we needed one. You're not the only one who need a rifle. Well, what do you mean, sir? Well, look what's happening. The frontiers are widening, son. Our country's expanding. A man's life in the wilderness depends on his rifle for food, protection. It's lonely and wild out there, Lifflet. Are you trying to say that I should well, make guns for these men? Why not? Lives depend on good firearms and ammunition. You've got the skill, Eliflet, the skill and the brains to help your country. I didn't think of it that way, Mr. Joslin. I think you should. I think you owe it to those men and women who move out into the wilderness every day. Abby, what do you say? Well, you're a farmer and you like it. But there's always what Mr. Joslin said. Well, it's up to you, Eliflet. 
Mr. Jaslin. Yes? Maybe making this first gun was, well, lucky. Suppose the next one, or the next one, isn't as good. <laughs> Olivia, I examined this rifle for an hour. I fired it. Gave it every kind of test I could think of. It held up. More than that, it's the best rifle I ever held in my hands. But sir... You're a craftsman. You're proud of your work. And no craftsman worthy of assault ever turned out a bad job. You won't. All right. I'll do it. I'll make you a rifle. And the others? For them, too. I'll make them the best I can. I'll make it my work from now on. long enough to eat. Bring something down to the porch, Abigail. I've got to get these two rifles out. The men have been waiting for them. I know. And you know where they wait? In my front room. <laughs> well, the sooner I get the rifles made, the sooner we'll get them out. When there's such a demand for your gun, you can't just say, sorry, but I can't take any more orders. You make more guns. A little at Remington. If you speed yourself up anymore, you'll be jumping around this little forge like a grasshopper. As it is, I never see you at home except now and then to eat and sleep. You put your finger on the trouble. The forge is little. I'll have to expand and hire someone to help. I know two good men in Herkimer I can get. Well, I'm going back to the house now. Those two men asked me to find out when their rifles would be ready. <laughs> Better invite them for supper, Abigail. But tell them they'll be able to leave first thing in the morning with their guns. Mr. Remington, I'll be heading a party out west in the spring. We'll need 30 Remington rifles. Can you make 150 Remington rifles for delivery in six months? 350 Remington rifles, immediate delivery. Mr. Remington, I'm a gunsmith. I'm looking... You're hired. There's an unfinished gun over there on the rack. Get to work on it. Abigail, I've got to expand the plant. I have to get up on Steel Creek where there's water power. Look at it down there, Eliphalet. It's finished. Barges are on it. Cargo. Going to Albany, down the Hudson to New York, and then to all parts of the world. Abigail, I'm going to buy this piece of land. This? Which piece of land? Right where we're standing. But how much of it? A hundred acres. A hundred acres? So much? I'll need it. I've got to be on the canal. Well, I can understand that, but why so much land? The business is growing, and orders for rifles are coming in faster than we can make them. I've got to expand the plant again. And this time, I want to settle for good. You can put a whole town on a hundred acres. Someday there will be a town here, Abigail. America's a young country, and we're just living on the edge of it. It's such a good feeling to have that we're part of this development. I like the feeling of being a part of America, of sensing its growth. You know, Abigail, sometimes I feel a little sorry for the children. Sorry? Why? Sorry that they've missed so much of the life we had in the early days. Before there were barges bringing in the comforts and luxuries. They no longer have to make everything as I did with my anvil and hammer. They're missing something. They'll not have the experience of moving in with a wagon load of furniture and tools and of building a home on ground which had nothing but trees on it. Yes, I'm glad to be a part of the growth of America. <laughs> Jane Whitman speaking for DuPont. Today, millions of men and women, boys and girls of all ages, participate in active sports. They like them. As a result, sales of sporting goods are on the increase. For instance, more than 20 million hunting and fishing licenses were issued that last year. More people are playing tennis. More people are playing golf. More people are playing, period. If you live in a part of the country where it snows, you will hardly be able to find a snowdrift this winter that doesn't have a pair of skis sticking out of it, 
with a student skier fastened to them somewhere. There is more interest, too, in spectator sports, as they're called. The World Series attracted great crowds. Football games are played at night as well as in the daytime. More women as well as men attend the games and are in the gallery at tennis and golf matches. Yachting and boating enthusiasts are found from coast to coast. In your own neighborhood, hardware, sporting goods, and department stores are responding to this increased interest in sports. They have larger displays of finer sporting equipment. Usually, nowadays, you find somebody in charge of the department who is really interested in sports. Whether your particular interest happens to be fly fishing or table tennis, your local dealer today offers you the best equipment and good advice on the best way of using it. In many of the great sports, DuPont products find ready acceptance. Nylon leaders and lines for fishing. Deluxe marine finishes for boats. Nylon fabrics for football and basketball uniforms. Fabrics treated with Zealand durable water repellent for skiing, hunting, and spectator sports. Nylon tennis racket strings, to mention a few. You can enjoy the outdoors, you know, without taking part in organized sports. This fall, pack the family into the car and go out and rediscover this wonderful America that belongs to all of us. Go aboard the Freedom Train, which is on its way to your city. There you will see the precious documents which guarantee our American heritage of freedom. See them by all means. But then get out of doors and see what it is that they protect. The land itself. The land is part of your precious heritage as an American. And never is the country more beautiful than in its autumn colors. A day in the misty hills. A walk under the red and gold leaves. A picnic beside a clear, cool brook. That is better living. We have that kind of better living in mind, as well as the advances made by science when we speak of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. Next week, Cavalcade has the double pleasure of starring William Powell as Millard Fillmore in The Oath and of originating its broadcast from Buffalo, New York in order that men and women of the DuPont Buffalo plant and their families may attend the broadcast. We invite you to listen next Monday when William Powell and June Dupre star on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. Men between 17 and 35 years of age are eligible to join our rapidly growing National Guard. You get regular army pay and training without having to leave home or alter your regular civilian life. One night a week and 15 days in the summer is all you are asked to give to help guard America's peace. Join the new National Guard. The music for the DuPont Cavalcade is composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Our Cavalcade play was written by Theodore R. Nathan. Ronald Reagan will soon be seen in the Warner Brothers picture, That Hagen Girl. Featured in the cast with Mr. Reagan tonight was Barbara Fuller as Abigail. This is Frank Bingman inviting you to listen next week to The Oath, starring William Powell with June Dupre on the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. The DuPont Cavalcade of America came to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.